Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Freak bringing you an audio commentary for WCReplays.com. This audio is copyrighted by the site, and the players are Ghostbase and SK Who. Now, I did one a few months back that was Orc winning. This one, spoiler alert, Undead winning. Uh, and this should be going over a fair amount of information about how to play the matchup. There's nothing too crazy out of the ordinary going on. So this will pretty much apply to the matchup in general and should work out uh, very well for all the players who want to learn Undead vs. Orc better. Uh, what I do want to say is that I'm not the world's Undead or really Orc expert. Uh, undead's probably one of my, my worst solo races, I suppose, just in that I don't really understand all the playstyle to it. But however, I do know the game well enough that I can point out in, uh, sort of important parts to the game and sort of their thought processes. So hopefully this is actually useful for most of you guys. So one minute, one X speed, observer point of view. Let's unpause this game in three, two, one, go. In case I forgot to bundle the replay or something ridiculous like that, just search WC replays for Undead vs. Orc uh, in its ghost space against SK Who from... Uh, I forget the event. Oh, from Zotac. And it's actually just from a couple days ago. This replay is from September 19th. This audio is recorded on the 21st, so everyone's happy. Alrighty, so you see here that Space is doing a very standard build order. Crypt, Graveyard, Altar, Ziggurat. That is the build order. Or I should say it's the build order for, uh, for two ghouls and then fiends. Also notice, and this is actually quite important, the creeps, not creeps, sorry, the trees that were chopped down and the location of the buildings. This Tomb of Relics is jammed up against the trees on the left hand side. I believe that the tree toward the bottom left and the tree to the top left are both adjacent to it and this ziggurat of course helps uh, complete the block as well. Now yes he will get scouted by a peon so that uh, who knows whether he's going against ghouls or fiends and he does seize against fiends. Then notice here space after completing, sorry, after starting his first crypt fiend and getting enough gold and lumber starts his second ziggurat. And so by the time the blade master is out of the gate, his acolytes are blocked off. That is an important point. Uh, he has done that very much on purpose. Remember this build order, the creep, not creep pattern, but the, the tree pattern that was chopped down. This is an important part of the build and this one I am confident in that I'm correct on. This this is this is important stuff. So keep that in mind, yo. Now then, notice that uh, also that space put his tomb of relics purposely in the back because the shops are in this game purposely uh, by the designers the weakest buildings in the game that they become important primary targets, uh, and they're one of the, the only uh, buildings in the game that really. Uh, can help you mid-battle that aren't really towers and things like that. So we see here that Space actually coiling a different creep for some reason. I'm not sure why he didn't just coil the Ogre Warrior, uh, but I guess, I mean, yes, he coiled so that the units would die faster, that he could get his creeping done more quickly, but he, I kind of feel like he should have coiled the Ogre in case the Blade Master went to harass him, because I don't believe he ever scattered to know where the Blade Master was going. Uh, but whatever point is, he does have that one skeleton chasing down that peon, and I don't believe it'll kill it. And unless I'm completely wrong on that, and unless I'm completely wrong on that, I don't believe a scout lasts long enough to kill a peon, but I guess we'll find that out pretty quickly. Uh, but another important thing, though, is that space is going to come here to harass this blade master and such. And uh, a really important thing going on is he actually walks up to the marketplace so that he can actually get vision of those creeps, because the marketplace actually blocks off vision of. Uh, there we go, nice job there. Space does not get the item, but he does get the creep experience, and that, that is just as important. Uh, I would say that they're roughly equally important, the experience and the item. Anyway, the uh, what he did, though, is, is a marketplace, and actually all these neutral buildings, actually, I believe they block sight, or at the very least, especially if you're showing up at night, your sight range is very poor. However, when you acquire a shop, when you, when you acquire a tavern or a goblin merchant or a marketplace, things like that, you actually get vision around the building, which allowed him to actually see the blade mask creeping, and he could actually walk in and out and back and forth, dodging these creeps, um, and in the meantime, he actually could still see the blade mask and the ogre magi without having to stay in range the entire time. That was actually a very important thing, so that is a very quick, freak giving you crazy engine experience things that you didn't know before until now. So there, there's mine for the audio. If you acquire a shop, you get to see everything around the shop, and, uh, and because of the way the engine works, uh, every two seconds the, the, the shop thinks about who is in range to acquire it and whatnot, and then it 
Anyway, point is, tag the marketplace and you can see your opponent. And the reason he, crept, he creep jacked him there is because he simply knows what kind of stuff goes on in that match of what orcs like to do. Uh, he's got to be careful with his death, but of course he's getting blocked off and taking a lot of damage. His opponent will of course just salve and be fine. Uh, Space realizes there's no creeps that he can steal right here, but will summon some skeletons and try to continue on his merry way. He runs off to the right, has a skeleton running around, and he really wants to cancel those salves, and of course he can't. He's going to try to get that grunt salve. Uh, so what he did here is he noticed that his opponent was running down towards him uh, from that skeleton view. So he's actually hiding off of the corner, and he wants to creep jack his opponent. He thinks that the that the orc might go for that orange camp, so he waits till he's pretty sure that the opponent would have started that camp, and then goes. And that's actually just really cute and convenient right there, that he knew where the opponent was going and where he was, and he, he tried to play it off like that. He's like, oh, I guess I'm getting the creeps instead. So you notice that he wakes up the creeps with those skeletons. That's actually a quite important point. Wakes up the creeps with the skeletons. There we go. Make sure that they're tanking everything. Grabs his Troll Shadow Priest, which he really, really needs right here because he needs to heal his Death Knight. And so just make sure he's auto-healing the DK, and he goes off and finishes off the rest of these creeps. He gets himself Purge, which of course doesn't matter. He is tanking some damage, which is unfortunate. It's basically canceling out all the healing he's getting. But again, he does need that healing, so uh, whatever. So there's that Fiend. He's going to mic her out. And again, he's just, he's just poor Death Knight. He's just taking so much damage here because of all this. But... His DK is finally getting up into a decent hit point count. Gets level 3, thankfully. And that's, again, partially because he managed to steal that Ogre Magi and things like that. I feel like he would go for this green camp, uh, or maybe not, and just to get level 3. But he sees, okay, well, I'm too late to get the Beastery, but I will harass your base. And he runs in, and he finds he finds his burrow. And actually, he probably should go for the under construction burrow, but oh well. Uh, right here, he should micro one of those fiends to try to dodge a stomp. He micro them a little bit too much, though. I feel like he really should have killed that burrow instead of just going for this, this uh, Torch Chieftain here. But, uh, whatever, the guy gets the speed scroll, so he's going to be able to survive, of course, very easily. And really, if he had gone for that burrow uh, and gotten it down, he really really would be able to delay his opponent's production by quite a bit. Because, uh, who is at 40 of 40 food, so it's not like there's a lot he can really do. Um, so who doing a good job picking off these creeps here? Or, you know, picking off Space's units. And those are two dead trolls, which is unfortunate for Space. And he's, of course, in really bad shape again. But he's managed to get this, this uh, torch even so low that he's able to kill it with coil, but he might, again, lose a Fiend here, and look at who just going for it, manages to not quite get the kill, which is just good micro from space. But I, I really feel like this was not a, a completely fruitful attack. Because he lost, of course, the rest of his mana. He, he's used every single coil now that he has. Uh, he lost his, both his trolls, and uh, he lost his town portal, all for the cost of a single Torrent Chieftain, which is really not quite worth it. Uh, he did make his opponent repair some, but the guy has enough lumber to produce everything he wants. Uh, the only thing he doesn't really have, and I guess this actually then proves to be slightly important, is that he's not able to start Tier 3 yet if he wants it. And he does actually go Tier 3 this game. So yes, technically forcing his opponent to repair did delay his Tier 3. I don't believe it was quite worth it though, unless I actually completely don't understand the matchup and losing two units in a town portal for delaying Tier 3 is worth it. I don't believe it is, but maybe maybe truthfully uh, I, I'm wrong on that on that front. But you can see here at the bottom of the map who, of course, creeping out things that the Blade Master can creep out by himself. And just taking so much damage from Bash, which is somewhat to be expected. But he can creep it out. So, level 3 Death Knight, level 1 Lich, happy things there. Five fiends in a statue. Now, one thing to notice is that this this actual, the uh, the build order, not build order, but the uh, the things he's going to make here are actually very, very specific. And, and you'll see what I mean later. But he's going to hit exactly 50 food with his late game army. And that's actually really convenient and important. Uh, and again, we will see that later. So, this Death Knight... Uh, getting level 3, he's creeping out pretty well for himself, and he has been using dust, so he does have dust to reveal a Blade Master, and I guess right now he's not quite worried about getting creep checked, because I think he knows his opponent really wants to, uh, get his, his Torrent Chieftain leveled up, I think he knows that there's not much of a creep check, uh, army available. But what Space does here is he pretty much pulls out these sort of easy camps nearby, the ones that are right by his base. He knows he can't get creep checked from the top because he'll see the army run past his base. His his base is, is sort of forward enough, and I don't think that was necessarily on purpose, but his base is sprawling enough that he can see uh, an opponent walk past. Uh, so he knows he can only get creep checked from one location, and of course by pulling these creeps, he knows that he's not going to come in from any other direction. So, uh, unfortunately there, who with his blades of attack and such, manages to steal that creep with the wind walk and unfortunate for space but he does have a level 2 lich which is really what he wanted because now he has frost armor and frost nova so here we see that space has constructed himself a boneyard and i believe he i guess he just got himself another fiend he's up to three four five fiends i don't see a second statue oh sorry six fiends I, for some reason i didn't see that one so he's got six fiends and a statue 
and he's going to get one shade and a frost storm and that's his his overall 